tonight. Our subject is the dreamer. The Bible begins really with the dream. We all place into a profound sleep, and God place a profound sleep upon man, and he slept. Now the thing is said in the scripture, say the appeal to God, not to man, but to God, to awaken from the sleep. Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead. Rouse thyself, O God, why sleep of thou? And throughout all the entire book, it's an appeal to God who imposed upon himself this sleep. Now science, they speculate, and they get all kinds of theories in the world concerning a dream. But I have never read well any scientist ever succeeded in impaling a dream upon a theory. They can take it and really impeal it and analyze it to my satisfaction. But tonight we'll take these dreams for you and show you what we really are here in this fabulous world of ours. This really is a dream within a dream. The whole vast world of ours is not a dream. And it's a dream within a dream. This morning at 4 15, I woke. And I didn't want to get up at 4 15. So I said to myself, I will go back to sleep. But before I return to that state of sleep, I commune the self and request it that I will be favored with an experience. A dream or an ecstasy. Not something that I've never had before, something different. Something that had great significance and was very informative. And so I fell off into the deep, once more interesting. And then I woke at six fifteen, two hours later. And this is the experience that came back with me. I found myself in the apartment house where we as a little family of three lived for thirteen years and eight months. 145 West 55th Street. The same superintendent was there. His name was Lady Fox. When I lived there, the side of the family, we had operated. The elevator was operated by individuals. But now, it was a push button there. And I started from the ground floor into, and the man started before me, and Eddie Park said, let Mr. Goddard, he called me Goddard. He said, let Mr. Goddard get in first. So I got him, and then two men got in with me. And then Eddie said to me, what floor, Mr. Goddard? And I said, six. But I didn't live on six, on the sixth floor before. I occupied the same house. I had a duplex. And we were on the 15th and 16th floors before. We had the 15th floor, which was our living quarters. Then we had this lovely upstairs, the 16th floor, sort of a playroom and a lovely garden. And there we go for these many years, 13 odd years. So I got into the elevator and it ascended and I got up on the 6th floor. And then I realized, well, this is not where I live. I don't live there. And the two men got off on the same floor. And I said, you know, this is the strangest thing. This has never happened to me before. I never suffered from amnesia. But right now, I do not know where I live. 
I can't remember where I live. And there is no help me at all. And then I stood in this little hallway, the elevator has gone beyond, and I am trying to remember where do I live. I know I don't live there. And then I said to myself, you know, this may be a dream. And if it is a dream, there is somewhere in this fabulous universe where I am asleep. Or if it is a dream, I am dreaming this and I must be somewhere sleeping, dreaming this. And if I am <coughs> dreaming this, well then, the chances are I am lying down and sound asleep, dreaming this now. At that moment, I try to remember where, where could I be asleep? I wouldn't come back, and I think would come back. And then I felt the feeling of being horizontal and sleeping. And I felt that motion, I'm horizontal and sleeping. I found myself on a bed. I deliberately would not open my eyes. I wouldn't open my eyes. I wanted to find exactly where am I. I couldn't. I thought, where am I? I would not allow myself to open my eyes on a familiar object on a wall that would relate me to a certain position in space. I tried to remember, but I couldn't bring back, where am I? I couldn't. And then suddenly, out of the nowhere, the little word Carol came into my mind. Carol died. Pain 25. At that moment, I didn't hear the voice. But from the depth of my soul, that being which is my own inner being, my deep being, that is breathing this, without the use of words, it said to me, you asked for it. I heard it without hearing words. You asked for it. Because I requested before I dropped into the deep, having awakened at 415. And decided not to get up, but to go back to sleep. I asked for an experience that would be significant, something that would be informative, something that would be great that I had talked about and tell the whole vast world the great secret of creation. And that's what happened to me. But what is the story behind it all? Here is a dream that is dream. Is this but a dream? I say it is. It is a dream. This whole vast world is a dream. And when I read the story in Scripture, and when he's about to awaken into this world, it comes in the form of a dream. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream and told him of the birth of the Savior of the world. And then at the very end of the film, we are told that when Pilate sat upon his throne, his judgment ceased. That his wife said a messenger saying, has nothing to do with that righteous man. For I have been greatly troubled this day in a sleep because of him. So the whole thing was to dream. Now, can I dream into being, by the death of my own being, dream the kind of a world that I want? I can. That's the story. He's telling it all, and he is not the first from his dream. I am his emanation. I am his pride. Until the dream is at an end. He becomes one with his emanation at the very end of the dream, as tells us in scripture. He leaves all and cleaves to his wife until they become one person. But I am his emanation, his wife, until this wonderful sleep is over. Until it's over, I think the twelve 
his projection, his emanation. And here's this thing called men. Well, how can I, in some way, take the same technique and dream in my world of Caesar, as he has determined to dream me into his own being and become one with him? I recall that in 1948, my father heard it for the first time. I started lecturing in 1978. Then the Lord well, he couldn't come to America. And in 1948, he came to America. And he heard me for the first time. And after that lecture that morning, we all came home to have brunch. And he said, you know, my son, everything you said this morning, I would agree with it, all but one. You told the people to close their eyes when they meditate, when they begin to assume and to visualize objectives, just. Don't close the eye completely. If you close the eye of that way, that came to a night dream. And this is a daydream. The daydream, you must have the eye a jar, but not shut. Just pass the glass. But I could not deny my father's suggestion, not because it was my father, but here was a man who started behind the eight ball in life. No education, no social background, no intellectual background, but nothing, I mean, behind the eight ball in the true sense of the word. And when he died at the age of 85, he could leave a fortune to his ten children. You raised ten children. I never once inherited one nickel for anyone until at the end of his 85 years lead to his ten children a considerable fortune running into multiple millions. And every day my father would sit in the silence with his eyes partly shut. And he would look and see what he wanted to do. He was controlled by not closing the eye. As he said, if you close the eye, you're drifting right into an ice where your attention is not controlled by you, it controls you. And you go right into an ice cream. If you don't close the eye, you can see what you want to see. And the whole thing comes come to pass in this world. Everything as you see it. So tell your people the next time not to close the eye. By the simply bring it into a partial closing state, a jar. And bring before your mind's eye while the eye is not completely shut exactly what you want to see. Carry on all the conversations that would incite the fulfillment of your desire. I do it in that way. <coughs> and here was a man who was talking to me, who died at the age of 85, but long before he died, he had made his fortune. And I don't really believe my father ever did the dishonest thing in this world. I really do not believe he ever did. I really believe, it's my deep conviction about my father, why I don't know, I think all of the ten hours feel this way about him. He met my, my mother when she was about three years old and he was about eight. In the romance of a matter of eight and three. And then, when she was eighteen, and they got married, and he said to my little niece, So we did a fabulous party for you today. Champagne is flowing like a river. Everything. When I married your grandmother, I could still afford a half pint of rum. And so we had a half pint of rum to celebrate the union, this wonderful wedding. But he went on with this simply 
what becomes in the eye. I'm controlling his attention. I'm seeing what he wants to see. And he calls it the daydream. The daydream does not differ from the night dream. Say so that in the daydream you are in control, or you ought to be in control. In the night dream, it takes over. Unless you persuade yourself before you sleep to fade in with a dream that will be informed. I'm very good to do it. But if you don't, and you sleep after all the the stress of the day, all the headlines of the day, all the newspapers of the day, and all the radio and TV posts of the day, that's what you get in the course of the night. That's confusion. That's a nightmare. But if you do it in this way, and he shows exactly how he actually went about making his fortune in this world. Why is that? The Bible has only one sort of dream in this world. All dreams, all visions, spring from God. There is no source of a dream in Scripture. And if there be a prophet among you, I will all will speak unto him in a dream. I will make myself known unto him in a vision. And throughout the entire Scripture, if all God speaks, but who spoke to me this morning? The text of my own soul. And it seems that very moment he was trying to entice me into a discovery of himself. For I felt, I didn't hear the word, but I felt to ask for it. I distinctly asked for an experience that would be unlike what I ever had before. But it had to be instructed, informative. Something that would share with the whole vast world and that they would actually understand the great secret of creation. And the whole thing came in this peculiar manner. Here I am, I just know where I have forgotten, where I laid myself down to do. Everyone has forgotten where he has laid himself down to be. Because the thing that you really are, that is in a profound thing, is God Himself. You lay yourself down to be. And you are dreaming what you are now. But just project to you can also dream for the whole thing begins as a dream and the end is a dream. So while we are here, if I could only catch it, I know how to dream here as the death of my soul has dressed me into being and has continued to dream for myself as I have planned it, so shall it be. As I have purposed it, so shall it stand. No power in the world can stop my predetermined dream. It's a dream. What is a predetermined dream? That I shall obey my emanation. He fell in love with me. He fell in love with you. And you are unique. No one in this world can take your place. There is no power in the world that can modify you in the eyes of one who is dreaming. You might find the dream out here in the world of people. But no one can fill your face. You are unique. And when you find the dreamer, he is actually enticing you, moment after moment, to find him. And the moment you find him, the being that really has left you into being, you will wait him. And you will eat. So this whole that world is but a dream. So when the poet asks the question, is all that we see or see but a dream with a dream? And then in the same point, this is Edgar Allan Poe. He answers it. And so asking the question, he affirms it. All that we see or see is by a dream within a dream. Now, that's a great revelation of the name of God, and we word it in the same way that Paul did. I am that I am. That's the term it. Am I that? Am I? And you 
the word that as the Dreamer. As I the Dreamer. Have I? And let's come back in the affirmative. I am. You mean I brought this all that well into me? Yes, I did. I wish I could share it in the most intimate way with you that I experienced it this morning. No desire to get up for the scene. Only using the self. Give me a spring. Bring it forth to the form of a dream or an ecstasy. Either one. To me, ecstasy is vision. Very psychic, but more clear than this. So everything is finally real. Just like this. Bring it either in green or green effective. But make it informative. Make it something that is so significant that I can tell it to the world and share it with them, to show the secret behind it all. And then that same seed that possessed me at the very end, to ask for it. You can almost hear the words coming through, but the one word. I have heard the words time and time again. But this morning, they were not words, it was simply a mood of perception, as though he was simply kidding me. Just play with him. You asked for it, didn't you? I did. I asked for it. And here I am with complete amnesia. I didn't know where I was. And yet, as big a picture, the same apartment house, the same Eddie Fox, who was the super, the same building. And I got out of the sixth floor. Which is significant. On the sixth day, he made man. Here on the sixth floor, I thought, we're coming to the end now. Let us make man in our image. I push that button. And here's the sixth, off of the sixth floor. And this is not where I belong. I don't belong here on the sixth floor. I belong with the dreamer who dreamed man into being. Not with that which is dreamed into being, but the dreamer. That's where I belong. I couldn't find my place on the sixth floor. There was no room there for me. Some things seemed right. And I couldn't remember where I laid myself down to sleep. But I did. Somewhere I laid myself down to sleep. And as I dreamed, I dreamed the dream. And I dreamed. I dreamed. And then my, my mind goes back to that experience that I think I've shared with many of you who are here tonight. Some necessary. But many years ago, I had this experience, which will be the 42nd of all, if you understand the most of himself. Where he made great joy to the house of God. And this time in question, I found myself in this enormous crowd, a sea of humanity. And as I walked with them, and they're all in gay attire, oriental, God, very powerful. I heard a voice, the voice screamed out, and God walked with me. And a woman to my right, a very attractive lady, in her late thirties, in all the Arabic costumes. And she questioned the voice, and she said, Yes, God walked with her. Where is he? And the voice answered, At your side. And she turned to her neck. And looking into my face, he became the terrible. It's not a country that I could be the one for her. And she questioned the voice. And she said, What? Is never God? And the voice answered, Yes, in the act of waking. And then the same voice from the depth of my soul, this time audible only to me but not to others. And the voice said, I laid myself down within me to sleep. And as I slept, I 
being the thing. I believe, and I will be the end of the sentence. I became so excited, I couldn't wait for the end. And at that moment, I felt these forces near me to this body. My hands became forces, my feet forces, my hair forces, and my right side forces. And then I had to kneel to the thing. As the voice is here, in the act of waking. So here the same dream of this form, but I didn't see. Where did he lay himself down to dream that he healed? He laid himself down to dream. That's where he laid himself down. He is continuing dreaming that he healed. And when he awakes, you or me. This whole that world is God dreaming that is you. And when you complete your life, you will die. And you will see the oneness of the God, not one greater than the other. No one, you and I might have had horrible dreams. Some dreams of these mountainous things, and other being a wonderful pastor, easy life, but the all right, not one is better than the other. So the individual may have this most mountainous class, and he thinks that's marvelous, but the all right, that's your dream. And other will say, no, what is the marvelous of here, we are pastors. For that is wonderful sheep. And you dream of that, so it's entirely out to the dream of just as he dreamed his wonderful one into being, he allowed this wonderful one, and he took him to all the great furnaces of the to dream and comfort all these things in the world. So you could just start, take the most glorious concept of yourself. I don't think what it is, believe me. My father never had a little, but he shot a penny. And today the estate is that is ten exceeds twenty five million dollars. And he didn't enter politics to get it, that did he? <laughs> didn't come from politics. He didn't come from anything that is subverted. It's just from his daily dream. He would sit in the silence, I can see him now, in what I call in Barbados, a Burbee's chair. It comes from Dinarama. It's a chair with elevated, extended arms. He put his feet out and they were elevated. And then he would sit out the breakfast, which was served to him about 10 30 in the morning. Well, that was what we call breakfast in the best of The breaking of the fast, as my father was simply a cup of coffee, early in the morning. Well, then what he called breakfast would be around 10.30 and that would be an hour dinner. A good, substantial meal. And then he would sit quietly with the eyes constantly shut and see all the transactions of business of the day as he wanted them to be. Not as they could be if others interfered, as he wanted them to be. And day after day he did it with the eyes constantly shut that it may not plug into the night, that it could control it in the daytime. For we knew this Bible better than any minister in the other. It's the one book that he read, and he read it day after day after day, and he understood his Bible. He never read the other book. All the others were brilliant scholars, but they didn't understand the Bible. Any more than the brilliant ones today understand the Bible. My Time magazine came today. Why it's almost like ridiculous to read the religious page today. Here is this fantastic power in the world. And when you see what they own in Italy, all on 
under the guise of being prophets of the Lord. But they are really prophets of the Lord, but not P R P H E D. They are prophets so differently. When they own fifteen percent of all that is put on the stock market in that land, and confirm them that if you will affect us, we are the only tax exempt holders of the stock. All that are pay taxes. But we don't pay taxes. And if you send us to tax us, we will sell overnight and mark it with cash. And they represent this great mystery. They have the psychic concept of the great mystery. And let me tell you how it comes to an end. It comes to an end in the simplest way. You can't come to it. Not a thing you can do until you wait for the birth. It comes to an end in this manner. Finally, Jesus Christ awakens in you. Jesus Christ is born in you. Jesus Christ and you find God only begotten Son and calls you Father and then you know who you are. Then Jesus Christ in him tears the temple in two from top to bottom. And Jesus Christ in you as the Son of Man of sin. That spine of yours as a fiery sin. And then the Holy Spirit in bodily form as a dove descends upon you and smothers you with affection because his work is done. And you have come to the end of the dream. So you have been with us. And you have been waiting the lingering days until you take off this garment for the last time. And find that you who began the whole dream, you have awakened with an increased power. For there is no limit to expansion of God. There is no limit to the translucency of God. There is only a limit to the contraction of God, to the opacity of God. So man is that limit. Man is that contraction. And God becomes man. But man, he becomes God. But then he expands. And the aim of his dream as man, which is predetermined, comes in these simple, simple pictures for simple little events, all in them. So, start this night and take my father's advice who made the fortune. I don't think very many people in this world can be 25 million bucks to a family it's not a public company, it's a private company. And he could turn to and give us this sort of money. And he himself not once did he ever get one nickel from another. And may I tell you, if you are not educated, he wasn't. By our standards, he would not have gone beyond a couple of grades in high school. A man who loved people, people loved him. A shabby fellow of six two, six three million. And just a generous, wonderful fellow who just loved. But day after day, seven days a week, he practiced as though he was being a constant artist. 
He wouldn't let days go by because it was another day. He said, every day, and the only criticism he had was he, was, I told the people to close the eyes. And he said, we had leads only to a nice week. Don't close the eye. If you don't close the eye, it's the daydream. And the daydream must be controlled. The night dream belongs to the depth of your soul. That's the deep of you. And they will, they will take all the good of the world and throw itself to educate your mind here. But on this level, don't close the eye. If you don't close the eye, you will in control. And then you can control the state. And this is the nature. God is bringing into being his predetermined picture, and no one can stop it. No part of the world can stop it. Well, you read the papers and you read all these headlines that this country is going to take over, that country is going to take over, what should our president do? And everyone's so concerned. And they're all so wise. That's when I came home and just turned on TV and started to study Cinderella. So here was Cinderella. But I was too late to get up and turn off the thing. And then came the great mentor, Mr. Lippman. Well, I was too late to turn him off. So I sat and looked and listened to all of this wonderful what we should do and what China could do, what they'll do. The things to do that they can have nothing to do with God's thing. And yet a brilliant mind. His choice of language, his choice of word is perfect. But my laziness allowed me to see this thing coming into me. But how many saw it that I don't know. But here was it considered brilliant, brilliant mind. Analyzing exactly what we as a country should do. And maybe he's influenced, that was even the right of that. He may be persuaded, I don't know. That's not what to do. So lose your eyes just as the way. And see what you want to do. Don't hate anyone in this world. If you want to leave something, something behind you, leave it behind you, but don't just drop it out, leave it behind you. Others can enjoy it. What I just call today, some of us enjoy it more. I have a lovely maid. I don't wear things out before I get them away because I don't want people to give me something worn out. And so, it's something that a little uh, broken seam. I would say, no, this is a broken seam on this shirt. You take it. And so my wife says to me, you know, she'll catch on after a while and she'll make a little broken seam there. <laughs> I said, no, she won't. Right. And so, you just don't wear a thing out and give it away. Some of them use it. So, don't think for one more what others will do with it. What do you want to do? Do you want to be wealthy? If you really want to be wealthy, you can do it. Do you want to be healthy? To be known? I don't care what you want to be in this world. On this level, it's all within the framework of God's plan. Because you and he are one, in the depth of yourself, I heard the word distinctly. He laid himself down within you to sleep. And as he slept, he dreamed a dream. He didn't lay himself down up there to dream me. He is in me, dreaming me. So when he's sitting in this New York City, or in my dream, Standing in this little corridor, but in where am I dreaming? This current place where I must be starting to dream. Dreaming this, but if this is a dream, where am I dreaming? And I couldn't think of that. I just couldn't remember where I fell asleep to dream this dream. But I must be asleep somewhere. And then I felt myself on the bed. And then that wonderful, simple little feeling. You ask for it. But then what a revelation. And then comes the memory of that moment in time when I read the enormous crowd filled with this invisible, 
heavenly state. And the boy said to me, I laid myself down to him in sleep. And as I said, I dreamed the dream, I dreamed, and I accept the dream in his dream. And when I awake from this dream, I am he. Here I am one. So this is the story. So tonight, take your glorious dream, wonderful dream, and look at what Let it fit that wonderful statement in the service of the mouth. Do what it offers, as you have been do what it That is this there, or as there has been this there. Let it fit that statement. Do what it offers, as you have been do what you And if that fits it, but in dreaming, and see it clearly in your mind's eye and believe in the reality of this imaginal act, and it will come to pass. No power in the world can stop it. And they will come this fantastic experience in your life. But everything said of Jesus Christ, you will experience. I was coming home from a funeral about a year ago. A lady said to me, who drove the car, first of all, she said, you know, our friend's in the back, and it's a lovely sweet Japanese car. And she said to me, they are Catholic. Well, I was suddenly surprised, because of a man, you think of Japanese as Buddhist. At least I did. And she said, they are Catholic. Then she said to me, our Christian fire. That's all right. Then they should be one of you. And I'm a fish. <laughs> she said, well, I took that for granted, but I mean, you must have a fish. Are you a Catholic or your Protestant? I said, no, that's a fish. Well, that made no sense whatsoever to her. I'm a fish. Well, you must be a Protestant of some kind, or you must be a Catholic of some kind. You know, the Christian scientists have to tell. Or you and the people know. Religious the science know. None of these things are possible. I'm just a question. And then I thought, well, now, can she take it? And then I killed her. I'm a Christian because Christ has been resurrected in me. He has been born. He has discovered the Son of God that he has found in me. He has lifted himself up in me in seven times four. He split the head of the body in me. And then the doubt descended upon me and smothered Jesus Christ in me with affection. That's what this journey came to him. And we all began to know. So whether she thinks me insane or not, I don't really know. But that is my story. I'm a Christian because I have experienced the Christian mystery, not because of the acts of the birth. But for everyone here, you will one day, I say to everyone, have the identity of the Because there is only that story to be told in the world. There is no other story. They try to make it into all kinds of forms, yet there is no other story. The story of God's salvation. How he emanated himself, fell in love with emanation, took himself to the dream world, which is a horrible place, and then completely yielded himself to his emanation, and then fused and they became one. And then God woke. And he and his emanation, his pride, World one. Now let's go
elméletben minden nagy kötsön ez a szimbálizó derék. Az only seven revelations, you'll find a seven revelations, and a hundred and forty-four thousand revelations, all kinds of numbers. Like my experience this morning with the six, I got out of the six door. Simple as a thing, but I got out of the six door. The so six door, then you have more than six. But it would not get a six door, it would be man. For seven, in scripture, it's just a completion. On the seventh day, it's a mystic. It's a mystical sense of a finished death. And the eighth is a new beginning. So the seventh is completion, that it comes to an end. But the eighth is the important one in scripture. Because on the eighth day, he rose, which is the first of a new age. The seven days, so the next day would be an eighth. And on that first day of the new week, he rose before the eighth. The beginning day, so there is no beginning or end to an eighth. Almost every hour of that. There is no beginning of end, not the beginning of the end. The seven is completion. The work is finished. And we rest it. Any other questions? Yeah, well, you have mentioned at one time or another uh, using expression woodland for this claim. Of the, uh, Would this be equated with, with the dream of, of, of God? Yes. This is woodland. This is the most important part I was To be here in this world, be born in the womb of woman, is the most important is the entire creation to come to the womb of woman into this world. And those who have not entered this world and they are unnumbered, they well, they are punished wisely as death. It is death. We don't believe it's death. We think this is the only living world. But to them, this is a whole world and this is simply eternal death. As they say, there will be great eternity who contemplate on death meaning this world has done. What seems to be is to those to whom it seems to be. And it is productive as a most grateful consequence to those to whom it seems to be. Even of torment and despair and eternal death. So in this world what seems to be, this would be said earlier, does it really seem to be that I be self persuaded that there will be denied it? Then it is. All in this world of death. But the Bible that he says we are and we deem as men in the body of Jesus. So here it is where it is one man. And you're told in the 8th chapter of the book of Mark. And when the eyes of heaven, he was asked, what do you see? So I have seen men by trees walking. I recall this one night. I told the story in San Francisco and it's such a strange reaction I've told it to <laughs> But I saw this politician, he held out in this world. He was one of the important members of the Socialist Party. <coughs> a great opponent of church. <coughs> well, that was Well, that was his name. You might have read about him or heard about him. Well, his vision I saw. And I saw him take this tree and put it on his head. Huge branch. All that a huge big stag. And he tried to jump off this cliff and throw as it were. And he fell flat on his face. He got up, took this thing back on his head again, and made several attempts to really be this thing. And I knew that was not it. You can't put it from the outside. That's what he was trying to do with socialism in England. He was trying to do all these things on the outside of man. You can't do it. It has to come from the inside. And so, you do know these things if you ever saw them privately. It's the most amazing sight. You look like the most fantastic stag, yet you're human. But they grow from within. The tree grows up. We are the tree of life. And nature, all the wise men of the world, as we're told, and all the gods of the earth and the sea, sought to nature to find this tree. 
but their touch was only there. There is no one in the human race. And there is no glory on the inside, it goes up. And when you see this majestic, flowering thing that grows from there, as far as they know, henceforth is laid upon me a crown of righteousness. For it says, The time when I departed has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth is laid upon me a crown of righteousness. Well, it grows from me, the tree turns out. After the body is split, all the energies that went down into generation are turned up into regeneration. And that wonderful thing rose from your head. And your majesty be out of the wildest stream of man. You don't want a crumb on your head as a queen does. That all these artificial things that are dead. This crown grows from the And you have a majesty beyond the wildest stream of the world. Growing out of you. You are the majestic being. And so everything grows out of this wonderful color man, where God entombed himself. So in this world, seen from above, before it starts to grow, they can see that, and that's been off this age at all. They see it all the space, and they call it wood man. So when the eye was open, what do you see? I see men as trees walking. But when we enter the new age, we enter the new age, just as you see the wonderful when he first breaks forth and the little things begin to appear on his head, they come over there and they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as he goes into this majestic creature. And it never stops going. So the tree was fell and everything was fell. And then the leaves were torn off, the limbs were severed, the branches were scattered, and no bird could find any rest and no shade for the animal. But you are told, do not disturb the root. Let it grow, and let the dew of heaven water it. And the dew of heaven watered it, and then it began to grow. So God was the one that fell. That was the tree of life that fell. He fell in me. And so it came down into generation. And then my wonderful dream, there was a nightmare. And then comes the turning up of the energy that went into generation to regeneration. And then, if you could see it privately, you go, what a house did you get to the house? But it does no three dimensional barrier to stop it. What you wear in gold, you bring it to anything. But you couldn't help with your posture enter this room if the room could stop it. Good night.